I wish I knew how to quit you. Are you trying to turn Vim into VS Code? Are you trying to quit Vim? Well, I can help you with both. There are better ways to bring VS Code and Vim together, and they don't involve putting a ton of plugins into Vim and trying to turn it into VS Code. What's that smell? There's a very popular extension for VS Code, and it's an emulator. Got a ton of downloads. That can't lead you astray, can it? But there's also the NeoVim extension, and it is fantastic. The author made some excellent decisions about when to give way to VS Code and let it do its thing, and when to give you the Vim goodness. VS Code is an excellent editor. It has tons of features. They add new ones every month. In fact, I don't know when that team sleeps. So stick with Vim, keep working at it, use it as your backup editor, use it to take notes, use it to do code challenges, use it to write up GitHub issues. And once you get used to it, try out a feature, try out a bug fix and just do it with only Vim. Leave VS Code alone. Now it may turn out you have to pull up VS Code and that's okay, but at least give it a shot. Eventually, I think you'll find that you're using Vim more and more and VS Code less and less, and pretty soon you won't be able to get around using VS Code. Yeah, you can use the wonderful extensions like NeoVim and the Vim emulator, and those are fantastic. But eventually, you're going to want to navigate with Vim. It's a whole different workflow. It's a whole different mindset. It's a whole different way of approaching software engineering. And you can do everything so quickly Now, there are a lot of good plugins out there. Anything by T. Pope, for example, those should pretty much just be built in to Vim. When you're learning Vim, you're going to learn a ton of ancillary stuff. And all of that stuff is going to make you a better developer. So whether or not you stick with Vim, either way, you're going to benefit from learning it. And my guess is you're going to stick with it. Now, Vim has so many powerful features, you can even time travel. I recently switched to NeoVim. I was hesitant for years. There isn't really any difference as far as features go from Vim 8 to NeoVim. So what was the point? I had my dot files all set up. I just didn't really want to make the change. It seemed like too much trouble. But as it turns out, well, it's really easy to make the change. And yeah, you don't really get much more as far as features go, but you get a much smoother experience and you get to use their APIs with any language you want. Now that's nice. Now, I like Vimal. I think it's great, but it's nice to have options like Node or whatever else. Now it's not a good idea to use Vim in a coding interview if Vim is not your primary editor. Trying to go in there and impress people and you can't even use your editor, that's not gonna look too good. And you might be an excellent coder, but be sure that you know Vim before you go using it in a coding interview. Now, we'll say that Vim users are likely going to have a lot better luck in coding interviews because they type things out. They're not using snippets and IntelliSense as much. And so they're not going to let forgetting a signature or forgetting how to write out your callback in the array instance method map, stop them or fluster them if they happen to forget something because they've typed it so many times, you're your own autocomplete. And so you don't have to worry about that. Now I'm old and cool because as I said, I use NeoVim. Grokking VI allows you to talk to your text editor and with one or two keystrokes, maybe three, you can tell it to do whatever you want. You can do it so quickly. You're speaking its language and you're getting things done. And that's what makes you faster. It's about context switching. It's not about typing faster or editing faster. It's about being able to stay in the zone. You can check in, do TDD, whatever you want to do, and you can do it quickly and you can context switch without losing 
everything that's up there in that cognitive load. Whereas if you're clicking here, clicking there, you're going to lose it. And so just being able to be faster, that's the key. That's one of the benefits you get with Vim and not having to stretch your fingers out here and there with these uh, sh keyboard shortcuts that don't make any ergonomic sense with Vim. They make sense. And in 30 years, nothing's come along that's even close. And I don't understand why. It's not about typing. It's not about being faster than the developer next to you as far as typing code. What good does that do you if the code you type is garbage? It's about context switching, keeping going with your TDD, keeping going with your atomic commits if that's what you want to do, and not losing track of things, not getting lost, going over here and there and clicking and right-clicking. Carpal tunnel really hurts. And it's not one of those things that goes away at the end of the day when you're done using your mouse. It hurts 24 seven and it hurts a lot. And once you switch to using the keyboard more and the mouse less, or hopefully no mouse or pointer at all, then after a while, the pain starts to go away. Now, after 20 plus years, I know what I'm talking about. If you're a couple years in, you might think, oh, well, this is way off for me, but trust me, look into the future. I'm telling you, you do not want that. Put the mouse down. Throw it out the window. It is Satan's tool. Now you might be thinking, okay, this is all well and good, but I'm going to have to get back into VS Code to do step through debugging and set breakpoints and watches, etc. No, you don't. If you're using Node or pretty much any other platform, you have a debugger in the terminal and you can set breakpoints, set watches, and step through. Okay, you have to maybe type out the name of the symbol you want to watch, but I think you can live with that. Every few years, Vim seems to make a comeback. And this time, I think it's here to stay. And that's in large part to the language server protocol, which was actually built for VS Code. So thank you very much. And now with Teams allowing you to use whatever editor you want, you can choose what you want to use. You want to use something from JetBrains? You want to use VS Code? You want to use Vim? You can use whatever you want. You have the LSP, you're good to go. So I think with the language server protocol and with NeoVim looking to be maintained for the foreseeable future, I think the future of Vim is bright. Like, subscribe, comment, tell me how much you hated it, tell me how much you loved it. Either way, there's more content coming.